There have been many revolutions throughout history that were unexpected and shocking, but the fall of one of the world's most powerful and stable empires over a short three-year span took the West completely by surprise. A few years prior to 1991, no Western scholar or politician foresaw the collapse of the Soviet Union. For the most part, not even the future revolutionaries predicted the event. So what within the Soviet Union triggered the spontaneous collapse of the enormous and powerful Soviet system? There were many flaws within the economic system of the Soviet Union, especially the failure of the policy of collectivization, which had plagued the Union since Stalin's rule. The state controlled the economy completely and all planning was done on the state level, leaving no room for autonomy. This system inhibited progress and often reform, especially in the agricultural arena. The arms race, a drop in oil prices in the 1980s, and an anti-alcohol campaign in the 1985 have also been accused of hurting the Russian economy. Corruption always was an issue that damaged and discredited the economy as well. It may seem like the Soviet economy was a major reason for its collapse. However, even with all of these flaws, between 1960 and 1970, agricultural output increased annually, and the output of factories and mines increased as well. The GDP of the Soviet Union was on the rise, catching up with Western Europe, and by the 1970s, the Soviet economy was expanding at about the same rate as the United States. On its own, the economic issues of the Soviet Union did not bring about its downfall. Repression is deeply rooted in Russian history. From the Tsars to Stalin and all the way through Gorbachev, people had few rights, labor was forced and with poor working conditions, food shortages plagued the Soviet Union as they could not produce enough food to feed themselves. Those who openly opposed the government were arrested or killed. There was little private property. However, the standard of living was on the rise. From 1964 to 1973, the average income per head increased by half and the consumption rose about 70%. More consumer goods were available to the general populations. Although the standard of living remained poor in the Soviet Union, it was much improved in comparison to past years in Russia. Therefore, it did not directly lead to the fall of the Soviet Union. Russia also repressed the nations and ethnicities it controlled. The Soviet Union, dominated by Russia, was made up of 15 republics with various ethnicities. For example, when an independent trade union emerged in Poland named Solidarity, the Communist Party had members arrested and the movement repressed. Russia had a powerful military, and this policy of repression was effective, until a new leader took office in the Soviet Union. Mikhail Gorbachev was the seventh and last undisputed leader of the Soviet Union. Gorbachev was something of an idealist and believed that he needed to create a more moral Russia. He also believed that it would be nearly impossible to reform the economy without reforming the social and political structure of the Soviet Union. Gorbachev embraced and attempted to promote democratization and the policy of glasnost or openness. Democratization Gorbachev declared, was not a slogan, but the essence of perestroika. In 1989, revolution began in Poland as the Polish government relaxed martial law and freed solidarity prisoners. Resistance began anew, and soon enough, Poland had its first non-communist prime minister. Hungary, East Germany, Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, and Romania all followed Poland in what is known as the Revolutions of 1989 which resulted from Gorbachev's policy of glasnost, which allowed citizens to speak freely about the government and the past. As freedom was taken for granted, unrest and nationalist movements began to take shape. Gorbachev refused to intervene militarily, as past Soviet leaders had done. This allowed these popular movements to be effective. All of the countries involved in the revolution succeeded in overthrowing their communist parties without violence except Romania. In early 1990, Gorbachev abandoned the policy of the communist monopoly on power in the Soviet Union. Soon, the new political groups began to emerge. In particular, a group of liberals led by Boris Yeltsin, who wanted to move to a free market economy and a democracy. In the August of 1991, a group of hardline communists occupied Moscow and put Gorbachev under house arrest. The coup lasted about two days before it collapsed and a humiliated Gorbachev returned to Moscow. The Communist Party ceased to be an important force in politics in Russia, and in December 1991 the Soviet Union was destroyed. 
In the end, it was not the Soviet Union's stagnant economy, poor living conditions, or repressive policies that led to its downfall, but the policies of glasnost and democratization, and Gorbachev's refusal to control his discontent people with the military that led to the collapse of the Soviet Union.